This week in Jamaica Now, relay resolution for Jamaica in Tokyo. Anxiety as the world awaits the 100-meter cracker. We'll hear from top contenders Elaine thompson Hira and Shelly and Fraser Price. Then, <laughs> Mandeville taxi operator arrested after gruesome bludgeoning of another in a dispute over a passenger. Teachers frown as Prime Minister hints at preferential treatment for vaccinated educators. Tighter curfews as COVID cases rise and more stringent measures are coming. St. Anne man who went viral following arrest and coerced apology to sue the state. And security guard murdered at home with his own weapon. His girlfriend is now in police custody. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. A resolution has been reached to quench Jamaica's sprint relay worries. Earlier, there was concern that Shelley and Fraser Price, Elaine thompson Hira, and Sharika Jackson had been entered to run in the relays, which would start two days after the 200-meter final. For more on this development, here is the Gleaner's Andre Lowe in Tokyo. Well, the latest information we have, latest update, is that the issue around the women's 4 by 100 meters relay team has actually been resolved. The J3 administrators were able to um, make the adjustments and bring in Natasha Morrison, who was previously an alternate. Um, and she's now been brought in as a reserve and will be added to the women's 4 by 100 meters relay pool. That will, of course, um, ease the, 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 the burden or the pressure on um, at least a couple of the girls who are involved in that women's 100 meters and uh, women's 200 meters event. So the matter has been resolved. Um, we can't say exactly what the makeup of the, the team in the 4x1 heats will be, um, but that's a major hurdle cleared, um, a potential disaster averted. And um, Jamaica, Jamaica's 4x1 women's team, which many expect will challenge the world record, um, you know, no, it seems that everything is on course. In the meantime, anxiety is building heading into the final of the women's 100 meters. The expectation is for a cracker of a final. Andre Lou, who has been keeping his finger on the pulse of Team Jamaica, is still with us. Andre, missing Shakara Richardson as yet, as she asked in a social media post today? In truth, Shakara Richardson would have added something to this race. Um, she is, after all, an excellent athlete. And the more of those you have in an event, the better. But the, the narrative that this event would have been diluted with her absence was always flawed. And um, the results of the heats yesterday, the times we have, we have seen from, of course, Shelley, Elaine, and Maria Jose, Talou, and, and the others who were all expected to figure prominently in this event, um, confirms that um, it was always going to be a cracker. Um, what we have been hearing from some of the half at the athletes as they leave the track is that the track seems to be very bouncy, seems to be very fast and we're gonna continue to expect to see good times. Um, 10.6 is the least I'm expecting in this final. Um, it's gonna be a cracker, it's lined up to be one of the greatest ever women's Olympic 100 meters final. Thank you very much Andre Lowe. Well Andre did catch up with Elaine thompson Hira and Shelley and Fraser Price after their heats. I'm sure coming into this championship I may be seen as a favorite. It's, you know, there are different narratives that are there. So I try not to focus on the expectations and stuff like that. I just want to make sure that I put myself in the best position to do my best. And once I'm able to do that, that then, you know, I'm very grateful. I'm feeling great. It's the fastest I've ever opened. It was pretty much relaxing. And I just was already talking to myself, control, focus, get out for the first 30 and control. No issues, everything fine. Since everything is fine, just taking it rounds by rounds, go back to warm dome and go to the hotel, get some food and relax for tomorrow. A Manchester taxi operator remains in jail after bludgeoning another at the gates of the Mandeville Regional Hospital on Thursday morning. The cabbie sustained serious injuries to his chest, head and abdomen. The upset taxi driver then attempted to run his car over the injured man. The police say three days earlier, the man now in custody was charged with unlawful wounding following a dispute with a 73-year-old woman in the town. The woman was also charged with assault. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is facing intense concern from educators 
after indicating that vaccinated teachers could get preferential treatment when school reopens. According to the Prime Minister, this would be only fair. We are not going to go down the route of making anything mandatory, but at the same time, uh, I think we would have to consider uh, ensuring that teachers who are vaccinated and who turn up to work, uh, that uh, they are treated uh, in some preferential way. And those who don't turn up to work, we may have to ask them to be tested. We may have to be considering what should happen regarding how they are remunerated. But the proposal has been met with skepticism by educators, two of whom appeared on the Gleaners A Section podcast this week. It seems as if we're going to be having very interesting days ahead um, as it relates to the Prime Minister continuing his, his, his um, communication to us. He made mention about remuneration, and um, I think antennas are going up. The, the mere fact he talks about remuneration, you know, I'm not too sure what it is that he's thinking. If, if those individuals who have been vaccinated, if they're able to get in a, a better um, salary than those individuals who are not vaccinated, and, and then we will have to look at the, the legality of that if that is where his headspace is. I am sure that the teachers of Jamaica will not stand for any other inequity within the sector at this time. In the meantime, the Prime Minister has announced new COVID curfew hours as the daily case count continues to soar to an average 135. The positivity rate is now averaging around 18% up from a single digit, and hospitalizations have gone up. Of the 715 beds in the public health system, more than 300 are occupied. Seven hospitals are now on amber alert and four on red alert. The Prime Minister says as a result, he has to act now, and so curfews on Mondays to Saturdays will now run from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. On Sundays and public holidays, it will run from 3 p.m. to 5 a.m. the next day. So these are really preliminary measures. Uh, come the 11th, we will have to take even tighter measures to ensure that we do not see a massive spike. As the minister pointed out, that there is a lag. So what we are seeing now, in two weeks' time, it will probably be worse. The St. Anne man who was taken into police custody shortly after he made remarks about Prime Minister Andrew Holness over the change in the curfew hours is taking steps to sue the police and the government. Attorney at law Charles Ganga Singh says, among other things, the suit will be filed on the grounds of invasion of privacy and the malicious manner in which the man was taken into police custody. The police had issued a statement saying the man was arrested in connection with a larceny matter. But following public backlash, the commissioner ordered a probe into the conduct of cops, saying an apology should not be forced from a suspect. The girlfriend of a St. Anne security guard remains in police custody in connection with his murder. 45-year-old Orlando Webb of Brittonville was shot and killed on Wednesday at his house in Claremont, St. Anne. It is reported that Webb went to the bathroom as he got ready for work, leaving his gun in his room. His girlfriend got hold of the weapon and fired several shots, hitting him multiple times. He died on the spot. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at leanerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Leaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, subscribe today and turn on your notifications. I'm Damian Mitchell and before we go, how a family member of a gunshot victim earned the ire of a policeman at the crime scene on East Street in Kingston on Friday afternoon. Come on, 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 come on,